Hello guys, today I want to show you a situation where you need to add validation after validation in three different layers. So imagine you have a form and this will be based on Laravel Breeze partly. You have a form with a form request class which has validation rules like email and password required or not required. This is the first layer, the first step of validation, whether the fields are in correct format, they are present or not. What if you need to add another check, which is much more complex based on some more actions, and you would probably do that in the controller, but then what if that fails and you still want to throw validation errors, validation exception with the same errors like they would be from the form request class? I will show you one example from Laravel Breeze itself, and then my own custom example, how to return the errors so they would be parsed as validation session errors. So the example is login form. And if we go to that login form, first I will show you the default Laravel Breeze. So if you enter something that is not valid, what happens? These credentials do not match our records. But look, this doesn't come from login request. It actually passes the rules of login request, email required, password required, we've filled everything correctly, but the validation error comes from the actual controller method request authenticate, which is interestingly a part of the same form request class, but outside of default validation rules, you can use form requests like this. So create custom method, call that from the controller, and if in some case something is invalid, then you do this. Throw validation exception with messages, and then you provide the array of field value, whatever text you need. Trans auth failed. By the way, if you don't know how trans works, which is in Laravel 9 in the folder lang, before Laravel 9 it was resources lang, and then it comes from en auth php, and here we have failed. So that failed corresponds to auth failed. But basically you can throw validation exception from anywhere, including your controller or separate method in the form request class. So that is one way how to perform validation after the default validation rules. And this comes from Laravel Breeze. And here I didn't change any code. This is how Breeze works by default. And now I will show you my own example while working on the course for multi-tenancy, which I should release in a few weeks, hopefully, I added this code. It doesn't matter what that code actually does. What matters is it checks something. What also matters, it checks something based on the previous results. So I'm using auth user, which is set in the authenticate and these two methods. So I'm trying to perform the login to the correct domain of the correct tenant. And then if tenant or domain isn't found as a fallback, I'm doing this. I'm doing logout and redirect back with errors. It's doing the same thing. So it doesn't throw validation exception, but it returns back with errors, which is the same array, the same structure as default validation errors. So if we go to that login blade in the Laravel breeze before the form, it has a component X auth validation errors. And if we go to that validation errors component in the Laravel breeze, it has errors which come from the session. In other words, you have two options to throw validation errors. You can directly throw validation exception with messages array, or you can redirect back with errors array. And that would not count as an exception. The difference is that if you throw a validation exception, maybe there's some layer that processes that validation exception in other way, not necessarily redirecting back. Maybe for the API, for example, it returns 422 status code with validation errors. But if you are on the web, you can redirect back, but don't forget with input. So the old values of the form would still stay active. So for example, in the login blade, again, it's under blade component in Laravel Breeze. So old email would be populated successfully. If you don't use with input, then if we fill something in, invalid, this email would not be populated again. And then the user would have to fill it in manually for the second time, which is a bad user experience. So that's it, a quick lesson of how you can perform validation after validation in a few layers, a few steps, redirecting back or throwing validation exception. What is your experience? Maybe you have done something similar in a different way. Teach me, teach others, and let's share our experience together.
If you want more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel and also you can support the channel by purchasing one of my courses at laravaldaily.teachable.com. I will publish many more courses in 2022 and beyond. So join me on the journey of the courses and on this YouTube channel. See you guys in other videos.